Hello, everyone. For those of you who were in Oslo a couple of days, a uh, couple of weeks ago, um, you might have seen this talk already. But I thought I could do it again for for the virtual audience. Um, also, apologies if I'm if I'm being incoherent. Uh, I'm so jet lagged. I, I just came came to, to to California from from Norway. So hopefully <laughs> this will make sense. But uh, but yeah, uh, just shout at me in the in chat if this this doesn't uh, if if I'm not making sense anymore. But yeah, okay. So I want to talk about sanity, TypeScript, and you. Um, and before heading into to that, I should present myself. I'm Knut. I lead the. Um, Developer uh, Education and Community Team here at Sanity. Um, and yeah, TypeScript. Um, let's talk about TypeScript. Uh, why why are we talking about TypeScript? Um, it's it's easy to kind of like become this guy. <laughs> I feel like when when you you start to talk about TypeScript, but I will I will try to avoid that. But as some of you might know, um, TypeScript makes kind of like JavaScript type safe ish so javascript is a dynamic language you don't have to say oh this is a string and oh this is a number like javascript kind of just handles that for you behind the, the scenes but uh, that's not always awesome because it's easy to make mistakes um that has to do with how you treat data types so typescript is kind of like a superset like a thing you add to to javascript to make it type safe ish um and that gives you uh, kind of like better developer experience, uh, not only because it catches kind of like bugs that you might introduce, but it also gives you autocomplete and tooltips and so on if you if you are, for example, in Visual Code Editor. Another thing that's nice is that we can use this TS doc convention to give inline documentation. So like for the Studio APIs, we have started to also publish uh, reference docs in with TS docs. So you get that both in the code editor, but also you can also go to the documentation reference site to to explore that. And I would argue that TypeScript also makes uh, it's great for collaboration and teams because it's easier to understand what the code does and what the intention with different things is. Like, what is this function supposed to return, and so on. And yeah, it probably makes you more hireable. I keep seeing TypeScript being somewhat of a requirement for, for jobs. Um, so it, it might be a good thing to, to start learning. And yeah, it, it, it creates some new opportunities for bike shedding and yak, sh yak shaving. Bed, bike sh shaving and yak shedding? I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, <laughs> TypeScript. TypeScript is here to stay uh, for sure. And um yeah it, it it is kind of becoming a, like an industry standard in a way like next js have started to ship with typescript by default you see the curve <laughs> it is going up i don't think uh, uh it will decline anytime soon uh, so to sum it up like typescript is awesome for a lot of things and sometimes it's not. It's it's important to acknowledge that. Sometimes <laughs> TypeScript error handling isn't the most helpful. Um, but hopefully that is something that will improve uh, as well as we go. All right. So we are here to talk about TypeScript and sanity. So let me first start with kind of like what is what was the issue here that we tried to solve. Um, if you look in this is uh, this is close now, but like if you look, uh, let's see, like tw no twenty, that's like four years ago. Uh, in April twenty twenty, <laughs> like jokingly, this, it was the the highest concern that we we like don't have like an official way to to generate TypeScript types, um, uh, which like you can notice when we, we used Gatsby here and. Um, uh, this user on GitHub is coming with a very reasonable request. Hey, can we just generate these types when I'm con consuming the sanity uh, content in, in this Gatsby front end? Um, so yeah, um, very kind of like a very popular feature request. And yeah, very reasonable. Um, that takes us to the schema. Because as most of you are familiar with, like how you can like 
design and construct the, the studio is you write schema. You, you make document, document types and, and fields. And if you look at this, that is kind of like typing your content, right? Oh, title is a string. Uh, uh, this thing is a Boolean and so on. So you're kind of ascribing types to, to these different things. And, and that kind of like becomes JSON data when uh, editors are working in the studio. And that's the thing. Um, this schema, it's, it's only for the studio. So Content Lake doesn't really know about this schema uh, except from how the data ends up looking in the JSON, right? So that is kind of like a challenge. Like um, we have to think about like how what does this mean for for the the, the, the content you're consuming, and then there's this. Uh, as like kind of like the previous talk talked about, like Grok uh, is a very flexible system. So um, what you have to do is to kind of like manually type whatever came off out of the of, of the Grok query. And like, who has time for that? Like you already typed it in the studio, feels kind of like redundant that you have to type it again in your front end, right? And if you change something in the studio, you have to kind of change it in front end. It's, it's kind of like a bit laborious. So yeah. And you would think that this would be easy, right? Uh, to, to solve because GraphQL has it. Like GraphQL is awesome. It has GraphQL code gen. You can just run that against the GraphQL schema and get TypeScript types out, right? But yeah, Grok is a different animal um, because you can actually change the data types within the query. And you can do really wild things. And so when we kind of are comparing these things, um, it's a bit like comparing apples to oranges kind of thing. And it's not always obvious because Grok in some ways looks fairly similar to GraphQL, right? So <laughs> the reason we invented Grok in the first place is when back in, I think it was 2016, like GraphQL was almost all, uh, just published as a, as a public project. Um, if you look at GraphQL, it's more like an API pattern. Um, it, it's more like replacing RESTful APIs and so on. Um, it's not actually, we would argue, a query language. Grok is actually a query language. Um, and the way I try to frame this often is to like think about Grok as an alternative REST, whereas, no, sorry, GraphQL is an alternative REST, and then Grok is more like SQL for JSON. So it's more a lower level thing. Uh, and like, you might know you might not know this, but like if you use Sanity's GraphQL API, what that resolves to on, on the server is actually Grok queries. So we're like, we're translating your Gra GraphQL request to Grok queries underneath the hood. Um, so we obviously have some clever folks on staff that makes query languages. So why did this take us this long to ship? And it's it's more it's not that much about implementation as deciding how this API should look like, right? Uh, figuring out how should null handling work, and like you have previews, so like a Grok query might uh, return draft data, and that might be required in the schema, but you might not have a value for it yet. So like there are a lot of these decisions that we have to make, and we are making them for a lot of people and we have to kind of like stick with those decisions for a while. So that often explains, if it takes us a while to, to kind of like get stuff that seems obvious, that might be the case. Like we, we have to decide stuff. And there are some giant shoulders that we kind of like deserve some credit uh, for the solution we ended up on. Uh, first of all, it's Sanity Code Gen. Uh, this was kind of like the first a deliberate effort to bring TypeScript generation to, to Sanity content. Um, and uh, Enrico did a pretty awesome job doing this for Sanity V2, San Sanity Studio V2. Uh, the only problem was that we ended up hiring him <laughs> and then Enrico had to work on other stuff. So, uh, so we never got to kind of finish Sanity code again properly and bring it over to Studio V3. 
And then we have Grox-D, uh, which is kind of like a different approach. So it uses kind of like it builds on something called SOD that also brings like TypeScript to runtime validation. Um, and it has kind of this query builder pattern. And they have shipped like a lot of tooling for this. Like there's a there's like a Grox-D playground and so on. So this was kind of like another a great kind of like approach to, to kind of like bring TypeScript types to the front end. And then of course, Sanity Typed, awesome project is as well. Pretty mind blowing because this is uh, kind of like uh, a solution that is implemented in TypeScript. So like uh, here TypeScript is used to generate TypeScript types, um, which is kind of like brings you a lot of like real time developer experience um, advantages, but it's also hard to scale because like once you have like uh, pretty complex schemas and work queries and so on, um, you are relying on TypeScript kind of like garbling through all of these things and TypeScript wasn't kind of built for that. So uh, so it was, we found it a bit hard to scale for, for more complex projects. But that being said, all of these projects super important for us, very inspirational, and they will be continue to be valid and hopefully continue to be kind of like take advantage from what we shipped as well. So, all right, are you ready to get out of the unknown? There's a little TypeScript joke here. Um, yes, uh, we are introducing Santi TypeGen, and what this is is kind of three things. So first of all, it is an extraction of the like a static representation of the schema. So now we have an official way to say, here's the schema implemented in JavaScript or TypeScript. <laughs> and then uh, we can generate like a JSON static representation of that schema with some attributes. And you can use this for not only TypeScript generation, but like other plugins and so on might have Use for this. Um, so, like Grok D, for example, um, are looking at this to to kind of like being able to delete some code that I have to do to infer the schema, right? So here we have an example of how this also kind of like supports the community TypeScript efforts. Um, and here we kind of can see that <laughs> it's like we have the JSON representation of the JavaScript schema. And then we have the second part of this, which is generating types from the studio schema. Um, so when you uh, run the type gen command in your CLI, um, it looks at your schema, the order, like the schema section, and then it generates types out of that. So like, then you get kind of like the TypeScript types that matches your schema types. And that can be useful for, like if you're doing studio customization on plugins and so on, where you know that kind of like schema type represents the document one one to one, um, right? So there's no grok between. It's like the raw document matches kind of like the schema type, and that looks kind of like this. So here we have like a post schema type uh, TypeScript type. There's a lot of types now, but anyways, um, and then the third, which is kind of like the the, the icing on the cake, if you want, is to generate types for Grok query results. And the results part here is, is, is important. And to do that, we have some requirements. Uh, so first of all, your Grok queries has to be assigned to a variable, and that variable has to have a globally unique name within your project. And then there has to be a tactically valid Grok expression so like whatever you're assigning to that variable has to be able to, you have to be able to kind of like run it in in vision for example without kind of like getting an error message that it is a syntax error and then you have to use the grok template literal so that's kind of like the thing you can import from the grok npm package which is kind of like, it's just a very, very small function that makes it possible for uh, vs code for example to kind of like parse the grok query and give it syntax and highlighting but we're also using this to say like hey this is a Grok um, query that I want to have included in my type gen, uh, generation. And when you do this, you, when you do this and r run the TypeScript type gen 
uh, generation, it will kind of like include those queries. And here you can see that I'm running it on the Sanity website repository, and you get like a lot of errors here. Uh, and that's that's kind of, I included this as like uh, it's like a feature because if you have like a mature um, project, uh, you weren't aware of these requirements. Uh, so the, the CLI will kind of tell you, that, hey, I tried to do this with this this thing, but it's not it's not syntactically uh, valid. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to to fix that. It will still come like do the types for the, for whatever queries are compatible and so on. So it's you're not blocked by this, but you can kind of like gradually uh, get the the project up to up to speed. And uh, the type for a Grok query result kind of looks like looks like this. And you can see that this is a fairly complex query, so it, it's able to handle complexity as well. And here we have kind of like the whole workflow. Uh, I've used npm scripts here to kind of like uh, do the schema extraction and type gen in like one go. Because if you change your schema, you kind of want to to probably regenerate that schema and so on. And yeah, it's pretty neat. It feels pretty awesome to kind of just get these TypeScript types automatically and and use them in your project. So yeah. Most of Grok is imported, and we are still adding functions so support for more functions. You can go to our docs to see what kind of like what Grok is well supported by this by now. Uh, unsupported expressions becomes unknown in your types, uh, so then you can manually go in and type them if you are interested. And we're also using telemetry to understand like uh, what are support uh, supported and how how frequent is it. So we can kind of like bring that support and prioritize correctly. And uh, yeah, that's mostly it. So Sanity TypeGen is available in beta now. Uh, you can go and install it by installing the latest Studio updates um, in whatever package manager you're using this week. Uh, of course, you go to docs to read about it. We also published a new course on Sanity Learn. That is about TypeScript generation that is more kind of like step by step, holding your hand kind of thing. And it's in beta because we want to learn uh, if it works for you <laughs> and if it doesn't work for you, why? And if there are the things you wish were better. And we already have gotten a lot of feedback in the TypeScript channel in Slack, and uh, we welcome more feedback as, uh, as we go on. So very appreciated. Everyone has kind of like given us um, some some feedback on this. And I also wanted to thank the, the engineering team and the product team um, who have worked uh, a lot on this. Of course, a lot of folks at Sanity has had opinions and so on, but but yeah, the, these people kind of like actually brought this uh, out. Um, it, it's super awesome. But yeah, I have one more thing. And I was like, not sure if I should kind of tell you this yet, but we are working on it. Uh, I would be very surprised if it doesn't happen. Um, but uh, but yeah, Grok fragments or whatever we call them, they are coming. <laughs> so I, I know that some of you uh, will be very stoked about this. Um, yeah, so this is a this is a work we are doing on improving Grok and improving the developer experience on Grok. And yeah, uh, it will be very exciting to to uh, be able to talk about this more uh, in the future. And that's all. Thank you. <laughs>